Have a seat. Have a seat. Sit tall. Sit tall. Breathe. Have a seat. Sit tall. Breathe in deep. Scoot in. How many people would like to know, to know the secret of how to get good fast? Not everybody. I'll give you the secret. It takes a long time to get good fast. <laughs> everybody wants a shortcut. There's no shortcuts. We live in a microwave society that says, I want results now. How do people think, you go, oh, do a private lesson. Can you teach me how to get good with the moves that really work? Or that it's, it's not what it's about. There's no secrets. The, the, the days of technique secrecy of my dojo has the right techniques and yours doesn't is over. It's called YouTube. <laughs> Don't let information overload beat you, though. People get so caught up, and all of a sudden it becomes now about how many moves you know. But if you watch the top level people in any, in any one of these grappling arts, judo, fighting, they do the same few things over and over and over. they got a few different setups. They're dialed at. They know how to get into those routes, and when they're on them, they're on them. Now, you, you take a good coach, and he can show you tons of things because that's what coaches have to know more. But you see the athletes. The athletes may only do a few things. Tim Sylvia maintained a heavyweight championship with a jab cross for five fights. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you watch them, they'll do it over and over. You watch any grappler, you'll see them have certain setups. This choke, you watch uh, Marcelo Garcia, he goes through it over and over. But he doesn't get confused. People think that we live in the information society, and that, that's what the commodity is. It's not anymore. Information now is ri ridiculously abundant and cheap. Now, what's the hard thing, what the real commodity is, is attention span. Can you keep your attention on what it is you want to get long enough to get good at? It? And now after doing this now for well over a decade, at a, at a fairly high level, working with UFC fighters and all the people I've got to work with, the number one secret I can tell you of really, really getting good at anything is called attrition. Are you going to be here tomorrow? Are you going to be here the next day? Are you going to be here the day after? Are you going to be here the day after? And I'm here to tell you, don't worry, there'll be some problems. Somebody will not want you to come. Money problems will come up. The question always is going to be is, is your goal set strong enough that you really know why you want it and what you want out of it? And if your goal is to really get good at this, it just takes some time. It takes some dedication, and it takes some, some repetition, just like anything else you're going to do in life. Now, what I love about doing something like this is not that, that, it's, that what we do in here has a necessarily any kind of big intrinsic value when we leave. Being able to choke somebody out uh, doesn't come up a lot outside of here, right? I don't know about you guys, but I'm not getting scraps every day. And if you are, take a look at your life. You're doing something wrong. There's no reason to be in fights in Portland. No reason to be defending yourself every day. So the intrinsic value of what we do in here, to me, is, is called spillover. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. I'm going to say that again. How you do anything is how you do everything. So if you come in here, you bore easily, you don't push yourself when it's hard, you just want to learn a lot of techniques, you don't want to become a master of them, your life probably looks similar, almost always. If you quit this, you're going to quit most other things, if it's what you want to do. Now, if you don't want to do it, that's different. But if your goal really is to get good, the thing that's going to spill over is when you stay through the challenges, not quit with the challenges. That's the biggest difference. You see the guys that are fighting with the UFC? They've just mostly been doing it longer. God, I wish I could do that. See in 13 years. Let's see. You take a guy that's got a championship, he probably started wrestling, kickboxing, jujitsu at a very early age and stuck with it. Or he started a little later and put in more time. It's just about hours. That's it. You can do it over a longer course of time or you can time compress it. But it's about that commitment. The cool thing is, why we look up to people who get so get so good at sports is not just what they did in that sport. It's because we know that that kind of dedication applied to anything equals magic. So if you're not careful, you come in here and apply yourself to this, and you really put yourself into it when you come. And I don't care if that just means two days a week. It doesn't mean you have to want to be a fighter. Two days a week is fine. It's what you, it fits in your schedule. It fits in your budget. If it's what you can do, then do it, but do it every week. 
And if you're not careful, that will start to spill over into other areas of your life. And you'll see that success start to spread. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. everything. Uh, I heard uh, a quote by Bruce Lee where he said, I don't fear the man that has uh, practiced 10,000 kicks once. I fear the man that's practiced uh, one kick 10,000 times. Yeah. Yeah, it's about, it's about what what you've worked over and over. I know in my game, I know a lot more than I ever use. But these jokes I use all the time. These are, these are some of my bread and butter. Uh, and I, I think a lot of people can, can get good at threatening them. But again, you're going to find different things that fit into to that style. But you, again, the key thing is you got to stick with it long enough to make that work. So I applaud you guys being here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to work with you. Um, I'm going to be leaving out of town for another two and a half weeks. What's that? I have something to say after class. Okay. And Tommy has something to say after class. Uh, I'm going to be leaving out of town. I'm going to Australia uh, for some fights, and then I'm staying to spread the gospel of Team Quest martial arts. I'm doing about four or five seminars over there. Uh, some people that are actually going to be Healy fight? Day. What's that? Is that the Healy fight? Yep. Yep, Healy's fighting. Uh, and, then I'll, and then I'll be back. If any of you are interested, uh, I have some slots available for private lessons when I get back. Uh, but I've got some special deals, and I'll, I'll, I can fill you in. So if you're interested in that, grab a hold of me afterwards. I'd love to talk to you. I don't have many spots. I mostly work with my pro fighters, and I travel a lot. I, I go do seminars. Uh, but I do have some spots that are open right now. So if you are interested, come and holler. Um, and I work with one or two people at a time. I, I love working with two, so if you want to split the cost up and make it really inexpensive, I've got a good deal that's running right now for some of those spots. So uh, come and talk to me. I, I'm going to put people on a list right now because I won't know my exact schedule until I get back. But if you are interested, come and chat with me. Uh, give yourselves a round of applause.